Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On Podcast Series, Macbeth. Episode 6, All My Pretty Ones. For the best listening experience, be sure to use your headphones or earbuds. And don't forget to wash your hands. Honored Macduff, let us seek out some barren shade, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Prince Malcolm, let's hold fast our deadly swords, and like good men, protect our fallen homeland. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face so it resounds as if it felt with Scotland, and yelled out like the cry of our deep pain. What I believe, I'll wail. What no, believe. And what I can redress as I shall find the time to write, I will. This tyrant, whose name alone blisters tongues, you may see something of him in me and seek wisely to offer me up. A weak lamb to appease that angry and dishonest god. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil from a royal command. But I shall crave your pardon. My thoughts cannot transform you, Lord Macduff. Angels shine, though brightest Lucifer fell. Though all things foul would wear the face of grace, yet grace must still look fair. I have lost my hopes. Perhaps that same place where I did find my doubts. Why in that danger left you wife and child? Those precious kindred... Those strong knots of love without leave taking. I pray you, let not my suspicions show you dishonor, but my own safeguards. You may be a good man, whatever I might think. Bleed. Bleed, poor country. Great tyranny, set down firmly your base, for goodness dare not check thee. Where thou well thy wrongs, thy title is confirmed. Fare thee well, prince. I would not be the villain that thou thinkst for all of Scotland in that tyrant's grasp and the rich east to boot. Be not offended. Our country sinks beneath his brutal yoke. It weeps. It bleeds. And each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think, also, there would be hands uplifted for our fight. Here, gracious Edward of England offers me some goodly thousand men. But, for all this... When I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before, suffering in more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. Who should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so implanted that when they shall be cut open, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow. And the poor state esteem him as a lamb being compared with my limitless harms. (laughs) Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. I grant him smacking of every sin that has a name. But there's no bottom, none in my dire debauchery. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust. And my desire, all chaste and pure impediments, would o'ertake that did oppose my will. Better, Macbeth, than such as I to reign. Excessive indulgence. In nature is a tyranny. It hath wrought... The untimely destruction of the happy throne and fall of many kings. But do not fear to take upon you what is yours. You may 
pursue your pleasures in such abundance and yet seem pure. The time you may so hoodwink. Prince Malcolm, there's no vulture in you hungry enough to devour as many dames as willing to surrender their own virtue to greatness if they feel so inclined. Along with lust, there grows an ill-composed temperament, such an endless avarice that were I king, I should cut down the nobles for their lands, and my more taking would be as a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice digs deeper, grows with more ruinous root than summer lasting lust, and it hath been the sword which slayed our kings. Yet, do not fear. Scotland has the sources to fill up your will fully on her own. All can be endured when weighed with your graces. But I have none, Macduff. The king becoming graces, like justice, honesty, patience, courage, I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each and every crime, enacting them many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of heaven into hell, uproot our universal peace, crushing all unity on earth. <sighs> Scotland. Scotland. If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? You're not fit to live. Oh, nation miserable. An unentitled tyrant, bloody sceptered. When shall Scotland see wholesome days again? Since the true inheritor of your throne, by his own admission, stands accursed and does defame his family? Your royal father was a most sainted king, the queen that bore thee, often knelt to God, then stood on her feet, died to be reborn every day she lived. Fare you well, Malcolm. These evils you recount into mine ears have banished me from Scotland. Oh, my breast, thy hope ends here. Macduff, your noble passion... Child of integrity has from my soul wiped the blackened doubts, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Here renounce the taints and blames I laid upon myself as strangers to my nature. I am yet to know a woman. Never broke my word. Scarcely have coveted what was my own, at no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight in truth as much as life. My first false speaking was now about myself. What I am truly is thine, and my poor country's to command. Whither, indeed, before thy landing here, old seaward, with ten thousand warlike men, all armed at the ready, was setting forth. Together, now, we'll better the chance of success as great as our quarrel is just. Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once. Tis hard to reconcile. <laughs> <laughs> See who comes here. My countryman, but yet I know him not. My ever gentle cousin Ross. Welcome hither. I know him now. Good God, with speed remove the means that makes us strangers. <laughs> Welcome, cousin. <laughs> Sir, amen. Stand Scotland where it did? Our poor, poor country. Almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Where nothing but those who know nothing are seen to smile. Where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are heard, not heeded. Where violent sorrow seems a common rhapsody. The dead man's nail rings there, but for whom? As good men's lives expire for the flowers wilt in their caps, dying before they sicken. Oh, retold all too well, and yet too true. What's the newest grief? That's an hour's age past hisses the speaker. Each minute teems a new one. How does my wife? Why, well. And all my children? 
Well, two. The tyrant has not battered at their peace. No. <sighs> they were well at peace when I did leave them. Be not a miser with your speech. How ghost? When I came hither to transport the tidings, which heartbroken I have borne, there ran a rumor of many rebellious fellows now armed, which I then so witnessed with mine own eyes when I then saw the tyrant's army afoot. Now's the time for help. Seeing you in Scotland would create soldiers. Mm. Make our women fight to ditch their dire distresses. Be it their comfort, we are coming there. Mm. Gracious England has lent us 10,000 men and good seaward, an older and a better soldier, none that Christendom gives out. Would I could answer this comfort with the like. But I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not hold them. What concern they? The general cause? Or is it one man's grief due to some single breast? No mind that is just must in it share some woe, though the main part pertains to you alone, Macduff. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. <sighs> I guess that it. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. <sighs> to relate the manner were on the bloody mound of these murdered deer. To add the death of you. <sighs> Merciful heaven. Don't just pull your hat upon your sad brows. Give sorrow words. The grief unspoke will ache, whispers the o'erfraught heart and bids it break. My children too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I, I wasn't home with them. My wife killed too? I have said. Be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All my pretty ones. Did you say all? Oh, oh, hell, Kai. All. What? All. My pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop. Dispute it as a man. I shall do so. But I must also feel it as a man. I can remember things as once they were that, that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their side? Sinful Macduff. They were all struck for thee, vile that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine. Slaughter fell on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it. I could play the woman with mine eyes. And braggart with my tongue. But gentle heavens, cut short all intermission. Face to face, bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself within my sword's lethal length. Set him if he scape. Heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come. Go we to the king. Our army is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. His night is long that never sees the day. Next Chapter Podcasts is proud to present the Play On podcast series, Pericles. Young Prince of Tyre, these skulls belonged to princes like yourself. They say give up before you're just like them. In a new modern English verse translation by Ellen McLaughlin. 
My life's at stake. Starting Friday, June 4th. Here's Shakespeare's timeless tale about a man who loses everything only to find what matters most. Subscribe, rate and review, play on podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Go to playonpodcast.com to learn more. I still need a pair of pants. (laughs) Well, we can get you some. We can make a pair out of my best shirt. I have two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last sleepwalked? Since his majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while in a most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature, to receive at once the benefit of sleep and yet create the appearance of being awake. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual movements, what at any time have you heard her say? (gasps) That, sir, which I will not repeat after her. You may to me, and tis most fitting you should. Neither to you nor anyone having no witness to confirm my speech. Oh, lo you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life, fast asleep. Observe her, stand close. How came she by that candle? Why, it sits beside her. She has light by her continually. Tis her command. You see, her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense are shut. What is it she does now? Look, how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I have known her continue in this a quarter of an hour. Yet here's a spot. Hark, she speaks. I will write down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Out, damn spot. Out, I say. One, two. Why, then, tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie. A soldier and a feared. What need we fear? Who knows it? When none can call our power to account. Yet who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him? Do you note that? The thing of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? What? Will these hands ne'er be clean? No more of that, my lord, no more of that you mar all with this twitching. Come, come, you have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not, I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Here's the smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh, oh, no! Oh, what a sigh is there. The heart is sorely charged. I would not have such a heart in my bosom, even for the crown that comes with it. Well, well, well. Pray God it be well, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. Yet I have known those which have walked in their sleep who have died holily in their beds. Wash your hands, put on your nightgown, look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out of his grave. Even so? To bed, to bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come, 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 come. Give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed, to bed. Will she go now to bed? 
directly. Oh, foul whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds to their deaf pillows will discharge their secrets. More needs she the divine than the physician. Oh, God. God forgive us all. Look after her. Remove from her the means of all self-harm and still keep eyes upon her. So, good night. My mind she has baffled and amazed my sight. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. army is near, led on by Malcolm, Duncan's banished heir, and bereaved Macduff. Revenge is burning them, for their dear causes would, with its fearsome, bloodthirsty alarm, raise up the stone-dead man. Near Burnham Wood shall we well meet them, where we once proudly stood. <laughs> Your true fate unfolds, fatherless Fleance. What does the dark killing tyrant, aunties? Great Dunsnane, he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad. Others that hate him less do call it a valiant fury. But for certain, he cannot buckle his disordered cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murder sticking on his hands. Every minute revolts, reprove his treason. Those he commands move only in command, but not for love. Not for love. Not for love. Not for love. <laughs> <laughs> now does he feel his title hang loose about him like a giant's robe? Upon a dwarfish thief! <laughs> <laughs> Now march we on, to give obedience where tis truly owed. With Malcolm pour we in our country's purge, sanguine medicine for our sick kingdom. Each drop of us water, much as it needs, to dew the sovereign flowers and drown the weeds. Make we our march towards Burnham! Me too will march towards Burnham. <laughs> Oh, bring me no more reports. Let them fly all. Till Burnham Wood remove the dancing, and I cannot pale with fear. What's the boy, Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequence have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then fly, false thanes, and mingle with the English libertines. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt nor shake with fear. <clears throat> oh, the devil damn thee black, thou cream-faced loon. Where got thou that goose look? Uh, there is ten thousand geese, villain. Soldiers, sir. The Play On podcast series, Macbeth, was translated into modern English verse by Migdalia Cruz and directed by Edward Torres. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Sound design, mix engineering, and original music composition by David Molina. Sound engineer, Daniel Ben Shimon. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. 
Senior Producer, Miriam Lauba. Managing Producer, Robert Capadona. Coordinating Producer, Taylor Bailey. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. The cast is as follows. Armando Riesco as Macbeth. Sabrina Guevara as Lady Macbeth. Chinaza Uche as Macduff. Jordan Barbour as Banquo. Bernard White as Duncan. Daniel Jose Molina as Malcolm. Flor Delis Perez as Lady Macduff. Barzan Akavan as Ross and the Porter. Annie Hank as Lennox. Elijah Goodfriend as Macduff's son. Featuring Manila Luzon, Monet Exchange, and Miss Peppermint as the witches. Also featuring David Watson on the bagpipes. Voice and text coach, Rebecca Clark Carey. Equipment and recording engineer, Tommy Freed. Sound effects assistant, Ben Welty. Production assistant, Benjamin Goodfriend. The senior manager of business operations and partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On podcast series, Macbeth, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit playonpodcasts.com for more about the Play On podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play On Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at playonpodcasts.com where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And don't forget to wash your hands. Wash.